I want to take a little bit of time tonight and talk about something that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, and it's something that I've seen happen that I'm not sure uh, everybody sees it, but it's a real pet peeve of mine is the fact that we are becoming so dependent upon this modern technology that we have. Now, there was an event that occurred back in the 1800s called the Carrington event. And what it was was a solar storm that came down and it hit the uh, transmission lines that they used to carry the uh, uh, da -da 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 they used to carry across transmission lines. It was called uh, oh, they used to transmit it a, a, a cable. They used to call it cable. That's what they called it. A, a cable. And they used to uh, I think that's what they called it anyway. Uh, they used to have uh, the, there would be cable operators and they would they would they would uh, transmit these messages and you could go and pay a certain amount of money and what they'd do is they'd send a little electrical signal through a wire and on the other end of the transmission wire uh, it would make a magnet click 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 and there'd be a guy to decipher that and that was called Morris code it was a code that they'd send through and then they'd decipher that code into the alphabet and then the alphabet would be the message that the person would send it might cost you it was expensive really so people didn't send them very often but if you wanted to get a message through at the speed of light or fast across the country you had one or a couple choices you could either send it by a courier and the courier might take days I think one of the couriers back then actually was a horse. They used to do, uh, they used to have a horse that used to run across the country. Uh, and uh, they would stop and they would deliver the big punch of parcels, like letters, to the next horse. And then he would take off and go as fast as he could. And they, would, they could get across America pretty fast that way. I'd be surprised how fast they got across America uh, with these letters that needed special delivery. Like, uh, anyway. So... This was the options we had back then. So what happened was there was a, a, a solar flare from space actually hit, and it actually destroyed these cables, telegraph cables. There, this was telegraph, telegraph. Destroyed the telegraph cables. Uh, so anyway, suffice to say that uh, today if such an event were to hit, it would disrupt our technology something desperately bad. Now, this would be okay if we were to set up redundant systems in place that we could have as backups in case our technology were to fail. Now, one of the biggest things I can think of right now that is actually a redundant system in case now, you ever been standing in line in front of a grocery store or any stores nowadays and the guy in front of you is using one of those little cards I don't use them they give them to me at the bank but I don't use them I won't use them I'm just stubborn that way you know they call them debit cards pain in the butt as far as I'm concerned but everybody uses them now and they don't use cash Cash is actually a redundant system to the debit card system. If the debit card system fails, you will be able to make purchases uh, through a two-party transaction. You hand the, the, the person at the register your money, and they accept your money, and that's the two parties doing a transaction. Those debit cards only simulate a two-party transaction. What they actually are is a three-party transaction. It has to run through the bank, and the bank has to approve it. And they, they approve it so fast that it simulates a two-party transaction when it's not. We are de becoming dependent upon everything. If you went back to the 1800s, all the small farms dotted the countryside, and they didn't even have electricity. They didn't need anything. If the electrical went out, if the Internet went down, if they, would, they didn't have Internet. They didn't even know what it was at, back then. Their plow was pulled by a horse. So if they didn't have gas they could, or, or diesel, they could still, their plow would still work. Everything would still work. And it was almost impossible to stop a society like that. But our society is getting more and more dependent upon interrelated systems 
that have to function in a certain way so that if one of those interrelated systems breaks down, everything breaks down, and our society breaks down in general. And we have everything set up so it's just in time supply chains. And an awful lot of it is, is dependent upon the trucking companies. The trucking companies are dependent upon the banks to make their paycheck for the next month and to buy fuel for the next month. They're dependent upon the banking system. And everything is interdependent. The banks are all interdependent on the derivatives chains holding together. They've chained themselves together. So if one bank falls, one big bank, like say Deutsche Bank, for instance, if it were to fall, the derivatives chains are, are all together so that an awful lot of the banks would fall like dominoes as well. Heaven help us all if this gets totally out of control to the point where money won't solve it. Because there could be a point where it could actually melt down to the point where money wouldn't solve the situation. Now, the United States government can create endless amounts of money if they're, if they're forced into that situation. And what I'm hoping for, what I'm actually hoping for and praying for is that when this situation comes, that they will be able to lock the system down and inject money into it like they did back in 2008 and get the system up and running before it's a total meltdown situation. Because if everything starts to melt down to a point where everything starts to fail, just in time supply routes start to fail, uh, the, the dis distribution routes for gasoline and everything start to fail, and the world starts to descend into anarchy, it would be awful hard to pull us up out of that hole once we descend into that position. Uh, it could be very, very, very bad for everyone in, in, in the entire world, not just the developed countries, but also in the third world. Uh, there, the people in the third world are, are better prepared to take care of themselves, actually. Uh, they seem to be a little bit less reliant upon inter interdependent systems than we are. We have gotten to the point where we vie for position in the parking lot so that we don't have to walk an extra 10 feet to the grocery store. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the things that they're doing to, to make us more and more dependent. I see these wheelchair parking spaces as, as all part of this dependency. Everything's part of this dependency. And what they're doing is they're eliminating systems that give us freedom. And putting in these systems that make us more and more dependent. The Internet is not our friend. Worse than China. The Internet is worse than China. The Internet could actually be our demise. The demise of our whole civilization. Uh, and so what we got, we got coming barreling right at us right now, is global tensions are building, pushing us toward war. But at the same time, our markets are teetering on the edge and it's getting worse. The pressure is building up on our markets. Our stock market right now is, uh, is like pressure is being exerted on it by the bond market. And the Federal Reserve is the ones who are putting the pressure on the bond market. And they seem to be kind of unrelenting in this pressure. They're trying to get away with something. They're trying to get away with actually, uh, selling their toxic balance book. They got $4.5 trillion. And they actually, I believe that they really honestly believe that they can quite literally get away with this, this quantitative tightening. Uh, so they started to do their quantitative tightening on October, November, and December of, of 2017 was the first three months. And they were all excited. They did $10 billion in those three months. And there was little or no effect. But it's a compounding effect because they increased it to 20 billion in January, February, March. And you remember what happened? As soon as they increased it to 20 billion, the stock market reacted 
a knee-jerk reaction from the stock market. Well, what the Federal Reserve did was is they ran in and they did some sort of cheating just for a little while. They figured that they had to stop the the falling markets. And I can imagine that they probably monetized the stock market and monetized the bond market both at the same time. And what they did was is, is they have stopped it. The stock market has stopped falling now at this point. Uh, and what they're doing is they're going back to their bond. Uh, they're, uh, they're selling their toxic bonds right now. They're going back to the reverse quantitative easing. And the bond prices is starting to rise again. They're going to continue with that, and the bond prices are going to continue to rise, just as sure as the sun rises in the morning. They're going to continue with this until the stock market reacts again, and then they're probably going to try to cheat again. But this time, the stock market's going to be reacting from a lower starting position, if you know what I mean, right? And so they're probably going to cheat again this time. And it's probably coming within the next month or two. So the stock market's probably going to fall like something like it did last time. And then they'll step in again and then they'll, they'll, they'll level the stock market off again. So the stock market is going to be going down like in steps. The problem is, is when it starts to go down under 20,000 again, this is when the stock market is going to, uh, trigger an awful lot of fear at that point. Then people are going to start to sit up and take notice and say, hey, you know what? This thing is just on its way down perpetually. There's no money to be made in this anymore. And then they're going to, there's going to be a different market. There's going to be a different, uh, there's going to be a different reaction to the, to what the market does at that point. And the people out there are going to feel, have a different feeling about the whole thing. They're going to realize that it's all in a bear. The whole thing's in a bear. And it's because of what the Fed's doing. At that point, we're going to start to descend, and the numbers are going to start to show that we're descending into a recession. And they're not going to be able to hide it at that point. And that's going to have even a more profound reaction on the stock market at that point. It's a couple months away all this is going to happen simultaneously. And that means that the stock market's going to really roll over and then expect a big drop. When the big drop hits in the stock market, Sometime this year, I'm not going to put an exact date on it this year, but sometime this year, uh, I believe this year, the stock market's going to really fall, the big fall. When the stock market gives its big fall like that, then expect the Fed to come in and to support the market. Expect it. They're going to come in with a new round of quantitative easing, and they're going to stop this garbage that they're doing now, this reverse, this this uh, this drawing money out of the system, they're going to stop it, and they're going to start to punch the system up full of money again. They're going to they're going to drop interest rates back down again, and all of, all of it, all of it, back to stimulus again. The problem is, is when they do that this time, it's going to be the death knell for the dollar. We're going to have a dollar crisis. That's what's coming, a dollar crisis. And a dollar is going to start losing value. Slow, not real fast at first, but it's going to increase its speed and it's going to increase its intensity as time goes by. And the end result of all of this is, is a market uh, decrease in the buying power of the, of the, of the U.S. dollar. At that time, when that's happening, gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies are going to be going to the moon. The cryptocurrency is going to hit a certain point during that time when the cryptocurrency is actually going to start to suck up the liquidity from the system that they're creating. It's going to start a vicious cycle for cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency is going to turn into the monetary black hole it's always been. That's what it is, a monetary black hole. What happens is, is you go out and you buy cryptocurrencies. And then your money actually goes into the capital of the cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies go up in value, and the fiat currencies go down in value. 
Now, this effect hasn't really taken really a hold yet because the cryptocurrency uh, hasn't hit a high enough market capital yet to really have a profound effect upon the fiat currencies. But when the, the market crap cap of cryptocurrencies get in, gets into the multi-trillions of dollars, say say two trillion or, or more, 1.5 trillion, two trillion, when it starts to get up that high, then you're going to start to see it actually have an effect on the fiat currencies. And the fiat currencies are going to be going down and the cryptocurrencies are going to be going up. At that point, you're going to want to have cryptocurrency. Uh, the the uh, gold and silver will be going up at that point too. There will be a panic to get out of anything that's in the paper assets at that point. This is going to be something like we've never seen happen before. It's never happened before in our lifetimes. It probably never will happen again. It's going to be a wealth transfer that's unprecedented. And what I mean by a wealth transfer is it's going to transfer wealth from the people who have wealth right now. It's going to transfer it to people who don't possibly have wealth. It's going to transfer it. Money is going to change hands because what's defined as money is going to be changed. Right now, how we define money is by the almighty dollar. We price our house in dollars. How many dollars is your house worth? That's what we say. That's going to come to a sudden end. And then we're going to have to find something new to translate our value of our homes and stuff into. As strange as it sounds, it could actually be Bitcoin. How much Bitcoin is, is your house worth? Oh, it's worth zero uh, point zero three sort of a deal seriously this is what it might all boil down to in the end or some other cryptocurrency might take the crown away from bitcoin but i don't know uh the only way i can actually see the other cryptocurrencies actually taking that crown because bitcoin has such a small uh, such a large uh first mover advantage now, I know I've been changing a lot of subjects and moving on to a lot of subjects tonight, but there's a lot to talk about in all this. This is something coming that we've never experienced before. And and I would like to touch on every aspect of this whole entire subject in this talk, but I would be here for like 30 hours trying to cover it all. So, so uh, I'm just winging this. What comes to my mind, it keeps coming into my mind to talk about it, I talk about it. Anyway, I was talking about cryptocurrencies right now. And what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, Bitcoin uh, will probably, unless there's some sort of a uh, problem with Bitcoin in its, uh, its ability to transfer like uh, uh, across the network, or like if it gets bogged down and there's just too many uh, people trying to use it and it, it uh, gets seized so that it can't transfer across the network. Uh, if, if it's not scalable that way, then what could happen is is it could it could be transferred. Its crown, its crown could be transferred into one of the other coins. But I don't really think that's going to happen. I think that they are going to be able to scale it. I think they're getting on the verge of being able to scale it already. I think they're already starting to experiment with things like the Lightning Network. And so I think they're going to be able to scale Bitcoin. If they can scale it, it'll keep its crown. And if it keeps its crown, its net value is just going to keep going up higher and higher and higher. But I do not believe it's going to have as much of a market share as it does now at around 40%. I think you're going to see it settle back into around 10%. Of market capital of all the coins now, I think a lot of the market capital is going to be transferred into other coins like Litecoin is I think going to receive an awful lot of market capital um, and Bitcoin cash going to receive an awful lot of market capital ultimately I think you're going to see some of these coins probably like Bitcoin cash move into the position of being worth a, a, a good chunk of a Bitcoin in the same way with a Litecoin. I think Litecoin is going to move to 25% of the value of a Bitcoin. And the reason why I say that is very simple math because there's four times as many Litecoins as there is Bitcoins out there. Bitcoin was always, Litecoin was always meant to be the number two coin. 
So if you're going to buy any any coin out there, uh, Litecoin was always meant to be number two. And so it's very possible she might be number two. Uh, or it could it could be uh, Bitcoin Cash. I'm thinking might be might be the number uh, two coin, and Litecoin might be number three. But Litecoin's I think going to be right in there, and that's why I I like them so well. You know. So listen. Anyway, you guys have listened to me for quite a long time now tonight. Uh, there's a number of things that uh, you possibly need to do to prepare for the situation that could be coming. Let's hope that this situation doesn't melt down where the distant, distant time supply chains actually get cut off and we get left high and dry where our stores don't have any food in them or anything like that. And this is all a situation that could have been avoided if they had have went out and put redundant systems in so that we could have our high technology but have redundant systems in, in place, instead of going all hog for this advanced tech, this this high technology and this new system of of uh, of the internet and uh, internet uh, money and everything else, instead of going all hog for it, to stop for a minute and say, hey, you know what? This has never been tested before. We've never done this before. What if it breaks down? What do we do? What's our secondary system in place in case? Uh, say the debit cards stop working. What's our secondary system in place? No, they don't do that. They just go in all hog for the debit cards and forget about any secondary system, any redundant system that they would have in place. Anyway, catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.